Hi class, today we're going to just set up a basic reason file just so you can have a basic rack that you can always go to. And when you open reason, you may be getting a demo every single time. You don't want to see that every time, so I'm going to start off with how to do that. Let's go to reason here, and you see we'll do the drop down and we go to our preferences. And then in general, we see default song. Yours may be set to custom with a reason preset, but let's go to empty rack to start with. Um, and we're going to change this to uh, uh, a little bit, but for right now, let's go to empty rack. So then we'll change that. And by the way, uh, for your audio, you can do your built-in output if you have some other audio device. Sometimes this gets messed up, so if you're playing and there's no sound coming out, go to the audio preference here in this drop-down and select, and it may say no sound, in which case you won't get any. So go to built-in out output and you'll be all set. Same way that if you want to set up your keyboard, you can plug in your keyboard before you start or you can plug it in after you start and whatever keyboard you use it should be able to show your Oxygen 8 right away if that's what it is or some other model that you have plugged in there um, and that should all be fine um, but whenever you plug it in if you, by any chance you don't have a keyboard showing up here you can push add and it'll add your keyboard so let's go ahead and close this and let's open up a new a new reason and here this is with nothing attached to it so let's talk about what we're going to add <clears throat> so for a basic very basic start the first thing I like to do is from this drop down here's all the different things you can add in reason to, to have your rack filled up um, for later reasons I'll explain later let's add the M class mastering suite this will be the last thing that your audio is going to go through and there's some really cool things in here there's an equalizer and compressor and a limiter and things like that. Um, we'll get to why you'll do that later. Um, as we keep on adding things, they're going to all be wired to this output, and what the next thing that's done is going to be wired to the mastering and so on and so forth. So let's create a mixer. And this mixer, this is the 14 by 2 mixer, actually looks just like a Mackie mixer. It has faders for controlling the volume of everything. You have your pan, so you can go left and right. You can mute a track. You can solo a track. You can turn on EQ, so you can have basic treble and bass control. And then you have three, four auxiliary sends, and we'll get into those later. You also have over here master fader, so your master volume. This is a direct correlation to what a real mixer looks like. And you have over here the returns for your auxiliary sense. So the very first thing we're going to create underneath our mixer is a reverb unit. For use with most of our instruments, we'll probably want maybe some sort of reverb. So the RV7000 Advanced Reverb. We're going to add that. And as soon as I did that, we can see that it attached itself right here. And in fact, we can just change this name tag here. We can change the name tag. We can say reverb. Well, if we spell it right, reverb. There we go. And hit return. And then you see it says it right there. And this is the volume of our overall reverb as it comes back. And on any device, if, if I want to browse the different types of settings there are, here's all my different reverb patches right there. It automatically goes into the space with all the different reverbs that I have on there. And I would say a nice one to start with is the first hall. Works really great. <clears throat> Basic hall reverb. Now we have this. And now let's let's just connect a few basic things here that we're probably going to use on most of our sequencing. Let's put a drum machine. So we're going to create the redrum drum computer. And instantly it opens up and you'll see that as soon as we do this that it's going to be connected to our mixer. There's actually, if you hit the tab button on your computer, um, you'll see in the back here the redrum is connected to channel one of the mixer. The left and right output is connected to channel one of the mixer. And here it is, redrum. We could just, if we just want to say this is our drums, we can rename it to anything that we want. And then it changes on the mixer right there. And here's the volume level for our drums. But right now, it's not playing anything. Well, how come that is? Well, all we have to do is, again, go to this folder here, the browse patch, click here, and here comes all our different drums. And we have a whole bunch of redrum kits 
you can see some kits that are pulled apart and then we have all these that are built in and we can find them. If you want just a basic drum sound, really basic drum sound, I like going to the drum kit folder and picking any one of these Groove Masters and they're basic unaltered drums. We have all sorts of other types of drums, everything from like nine inch nail sounds to really cool hip hop sounds. Uh, but for a basic drum where you can have a simple ki kick that has your kick and your snare and uh, acoustic sounding instruments out, any one of these are pretty good. And when I do that, then each one of these is going to play our sound. We have toms and snares. If we click on these, we can sample each of our sounds. And you can see that the lights here are, are going up when we, when we hit that. Um, and in fact, if you have your keyboard attached, you'll be able also to, uh, to play the different, um, the different notes. The first 10 notes on your keyboard will play that as well. So uh, you'll be able to uh, trigger those. But you can also trigger them with your mouse. And we have each of those sounds. See how that works? So now we have our drum set up. And you can just keep on adding all sorts of different kinds of things, synths and things. Um, let's say that one other thing you wanted to add was maybe a bass. You can do this in a couple different ways. If you want to just add a sample player, then the NNXT Advanced Sampler is a really good one to add. We can add this here and we can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to make this where my electric bass is going to be. So I'm just going to type in the, the name so that when I see it on the mixer, it's going to come out really nice. And take a look. There it is up on our mixer here, electric bass. And um, all we have to do to get it patched Go to the browse patch and then I want to just go to the NNXT I can click on that and I can actually go to the base here and select that and then I can just pick one maybe I would like the finger base or whatever base that I want I have some P bases slap base um, whatever type you want for each one so let's just put one in there for now maybe we'll put the uh, um, the Hofner pick base and Paul McCartney and so now that's loaded in there and so we have a bass and drums that are that are in our reason file and that, and now let's save this and we can save this as something we could say that this is our basic reason file and then uh, hit Apple D and it'll go to your desktop and then we can save that as our basic reason file and here it is my basic reason file so now I'm going to go back into Reason and I'm going to go to my preferences and I'm going to say that when I want to go and open this up I want it to hit my basic Reason file every time so I'm going to browse this right here and I'm going to go to my desktop and there's my basic Reason file and now it's going to select that every time there you can see it says basic Reason file so that from now on when I close this and I open up a new file I'm going to get a basic reason file. It looks exactly the same, but it's untitled. And this will be my default for every time that I open it up. And then I can save it for my project for whatever I want to call it. And that's how you have a basic, basic reasons set up. Everything all wired and ready to go.